What's going on everyone? So Jared Vanderbilt is currently in Japan with Phil Handy and Rui Hachimura working on his game. This guy has been working hard uh, since the Lakers picked up his option. And one of the big things that has stood out that many people are talking about is Phil Handy said that Jared Vanderbilt grew a couple inches. And there are reports that have said that Jared Vanderbilt is now around 6'10", which he was already 6'8", and an elite defensive player. Arguably top five in the league as far as like just on ball, hard nosed defensive type player. And if he is 6'10 now, good luck. <laughs> if you're an offense player, you have the ball and Jared Vanderbilt is on you with his length, his wingspan, his foot speed, his quickness, and he really is 6'10. I like, I don't know how you score on this guy, right? Like, Again, great players, you're never going to shut down great players. You're never going to stop great players. But, like, he was, he went from 6'8", to 14. He looks bigger, right? And he definitely looks stockier in the images with Phil Handy. So, if he is, like, 6'10", let's say 225. Like, he's got the strength. He's got the foot speed. He's got the endurance. He's got the youth. The guy's 24 years old. He's got a lot of things that are in his favor as far as being an elite defensive player. And now at 6'10", his ability to block shots and defend and his length and all of that, that is ridiculous. Now, we'll see as the season progresses how accurate that is. You know, sometimes things get a little, uh, you know, embellished, right? Like, oh, yeah, you know, you always hear, oh, he grew, you know, a couple inches. Like, they said the same thing about Max Christie, although Max Christie did look a little bigger. And Max Christie was, you know, 19. So it makes a little little more sense. Um, Jared Vanderbilt being 24, it's a little bit of a question mark. But it's not, like, impossible, right? It's not like nobody at age 23, 24 has ever grown bigger. You know, like, usually men, they stop growing in their, like, early 20s into 20. Now, usually by 18, you're kind of in the in the range where you're going to be. But you do see guys, plenty of NBA players have grown a couple inches once they got into the league, you know, grown an inch or two. Um, but it is rare that somebody at 24 would grow two inches. But it's not, again, that ridiculously uncommon. And you got to think of all, like, the workouts and equipment and, you know, all kinds of stuff that they are doing to improve their bodies, all the stretches and all kinds of stuff. So it's really not that far-fetched. For the average person to, like, not grow an inch or two at 24, yeah. But an NBA player, it is not that far-fetched. But regardless, the the size and the length is wonderful, right? We really need that. He was a just a, a demon out there on the defensive side. And Phil Handy, we know what he's capable of doing. He is the best at what he does as far as player development. And it's not just because he's a Laker. I mean, he was the best in the league even prior to being a Laker. And he's so beloved, so respected in this league. We have seen what he's been able to do with countless players as far as their improvement and development. And Jared Vanderbilt working heavily with uh, Phil Handy, I think, is massive. But we need his shooting. We need his his offense to pick up slightly. I'm not saying he has to go and be a, a 20 plus game a night scorer. I'm not saying he has to be a 45% three point shooter, but he needs to be well enough to where he isn't, he doesn't have to get played off the court, right? Cause we saw that in spots, right? Jared Vanderbilt, that corner three, we need him to just get to, can he at least get to league average, right? Which is around 35%. If he can get around the league average, that would just be just chef kiss, right? He was 30% last year for the Lakers. He was actually 33% for the Utah Jazz. But the year prior to that, he was 14%. So he had an 18% increase in his shooting percentage, which is good. Now, I'm not saying he's going to have an 18% shooting increase this year because then he'd be at 48%, almost 50%. But can he have a, you know, 5 to 6% three-point jump. Again, he was 33% at Utah. So can he go from 33% to, say, you know, 36, 37%? That would only be a three to 4% increase. At that point, like, I think that that is very reasonable, at least in that corner three, because that's where he's at. 
He also needs, I'm hoping at least, he's working on his hands. Right? We need him to be able to catch that ball. Because we saw so many times how good he is at cutting to the basket and getting in position to where he can catch the ball and he just fumbles it or just, just takes his eye off the ball, whatever it is. I don't know why. I don't know what forever reason, but he just he needs to do a better job of just catching his coordination and stuff like that, which can all be taught. That can all be learned. You can practice that. And hopefully... That is another big adjustment that we see to his game. Is his, because he's forgotten a lot, especially because of his lack of shooting. You know, so his defender ends up sl- slacking off and kind of just wanders away. And then you see him just, boom, he's gone because he's quick. And he's long and he's lengthy. And now if he's 6'10", now he's a lob threat, like a big lob threat. So you can just throw it up there and let him go grab it. But he's got to have the hands for that. He's got to have the hands and the ability to go up there and grab it, bring it in, and slam it home, right? And I imagine I imagine he's working on everything, right? He's working on his foot speed. He's working on his coordination. He's working on his handle, um, you know, because at 6'10", I, dude, can he be like our Lamar Odom, right? Like, think of, if, if he could pass two, that would make a, a world of difference. And I'm not talking about having to be like some, like, you know, Magic Johnson level passer, but if he can just get, again, it doesn't have to be great, just a little, you know, all around game, um, even just average at everything, I think that that would add so much value, but Lamar Odom kind of comes to mind, right, got a guy 6'10", he was, what, 220 pounds, could do everything, pass, shoot, bring the ball up the court, because that would just be, add so much more to his game, and so much more to the Lakers. If he could catch the ball off the rebound, right, at a 6'10 length, push it up the court, not have to wait for a point guard or something like that to come up, just get the ball and just push it up the court, and then either go coast to coast if the defense doesn't collapse, or, you know, kick it out to somebody, make some plays for others. Like, that would be awesome, right, to have a guy like that that could just come in and and be that level of, contributor right um like Lamar Odom no Lamar Odom wasn't like this elite three-point shooter I mean he had he had years um he had a a year in what was 2005 I think where he shot like 36 37 percent but outside of that he was like you know 37 percent or uh, sorry 33 percent 32 percent um from three-point range for his career he was 32 percent so he's not like he wasn't some like elite three-point shooter but with today's NBA and the way that you know training is and the the ability that some of these guys have to shoot if he can develop the handle I'm not saying that he has to be Kyrie with the handle but well enough to where he's comfortable going coast to coast making plays for others getting to the rim because you saw that with Lamar Odom right he'd get the rebound he was gone he'd lay it up on the other end cross some dude up, you know, around the back, like, you know, doing some nice little pass. I'm not saying he has to be all flashy with it, but can he grab the rebound, get up the court, and get to the basket and use his length at 6'10", if he really is 6'10", you know? Um, even if he, even if he's 6'9", right? Even if he only grew an inch, right? At 6'9", like, come on, like, that's perfect, right? Like, his ability to do that with his foot speed and his quickness, his ability to defend pretty much all five positions, there's so much value in that. Like, because that, that's the thing. Now, if you look at this Lakers roster, there is a real possibility that Jared Vanderbilt could be the odd man out. And when I say Jared Vanderbilt being the odd man out, I don't mean he's not going to play ever or he's not going to play at all. But you look at, you got Tori and Prince, you got Rui Hachimura, right? You got Anthony Davis who wants to play the four now. So that means that there's less minutes at the four, which means that guys like, you know, Rui are going to have to play the three more. Uh, Cam Reddish, right? Uh, And him, LeBron James is going to have to play the three more. So if that ends up happening, then you have four or five guys that are in front of Jared Vanderbilt. I really wouldn't put Cam Reddish ahead of Jared Vanderbilt, but who knows? Who knows how much he improves on his offensive game. That was a guy that could give you 10 plus a game, right? And play some defense and got good size, good length, good athleticism. So, you know, if if he doesn't improve his offense, then he might not get more than 
10 minutes a game on just assignment, right? He, he would be like a specialty guy. You know, end a game, it's a, it's a tight game. Get Jared Vanderbilt in there to slow down Luka or to slow down Jamal Murray or Steph or whatever, right? Like, that is probably what he will become if he doesn't improve on his three-point shooting, which I'm sure he knows because he's been actively been working on his three-point shooting and just getting up a ridiculous amount of shots. So my guess is that he's fully aware of that. And I'm sure the Lakers talked to him and told him what they need from him. Like, dude, you got you to knock down that corner three. You want a contract. And that's another thing. After this season, he's due for a new contract. Him, him with a three-point shot, again, not even elite, it could be the difference between him getting, you know, four years, 20 million and four years, you know, 40 to 60 million, something like that. Right. Like if he can develop a shot, he might get something similar to like what Austin Reeves got four years, 56 million, something like that. Right. Where if he doesn't, then he's probably looking at four years, you know, like I said, 20 million, maybe 25 million somewhere in that ballpark. That's a big difference. You know, you could basically double your money if you can just develop a, a serviceable three-point shot. Doesn't have to be elite. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. Just a serviceable three-point shot that can be relied on and be trusted. And, you know, that they can, that defenses have to be honest, right? Like, t- defenses can't just leave you wide open and just say, ah, forget it. He ain't going to, like, you know, like we saw that was the game plan in the playoffs. Teams would just live with him shooting the three ball. And now look, if he shoots 35% or something like that from three, teams might still live with that, right? Still might live with him shooting the three ball. But if he's knocking it down at a more favorable clip, then that means more times than not, he's going to make it. And more times than not, it's going. he's going to have these stretches where he hits. Because we saw it in the playoffs where he had a stretch where he hit like three or four straight, Right? If he can elevate his percentage and knock down three or four straight more frequently, the teams are going to have to like, hey man, he could he could be the like can't really leave him open because if we do, then you know if he knocks down two or three of them, or after the first one, right? Let's say kick out, drive and kick, he knocks down the first one. All right, well we got to guard him the rest of the way. It just it changes the the entire landscape of the game. And opens up so much more. And he'd probably get more opportunities on the offensive end. That also give him more of an ability to, to, you know, pump fake, get to the basket. Or, you know, when a guy's out, his foot speed kind of like roll over him and then get to the basket as a cutter and have like LeBron or D'Lo or Reeves or, you know, Vincent or whomever find him as a willing cutter. And now if he worked on his hands, he can catch the ball and finish at the rim. It just will make things so much easier for him, but also the Lakers. So hopefully it's correct. Hopefully he really is 6'10", and hopefully he is improved on his game. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Big Vando 6'10", if he is, what do you think it impacts his game? Uh, How do you feel about it? Love to hear it. Let me know.